Bonjour. Chapter 8 of John. Once more. This is New Testament video 278. John lesson 32. John 8. A long chapter. That's the bad news. The good news is we are halfway through it. Heavenly Father, thank you for another day of grace. May you cause us to focus on your word, rightly divide it. And may you edify, encourage, and enlighten us as we continue in John chapter 8. Thank you. In Christ's name, amen. John 8, 31. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, If ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. They answered him, We be Abraham's seed, and were never in bondage to any man. How sayest thou, ye shall be made free? Jesus answered them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Whosoever committeth sin is the servant of sin, and the servant abideth not in the house forever, but the son abideth ever. If the Son therefore shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. I know that ye are Abraham's seed, but ye seek to kill me, because my word hath no place in you. I speak that which I have seen with my father, and ye do that which ye have seen with your father. They answered and said unto him, Abraham is our father. Jesus saith unto them, if ye were Abraham's children, ye would do the works of Abraham. But now ye seek to kill me, a man that hath told you the truth, which I have heard of God. This did not Abraham. Ye do the deeds of your father. Then said they to him, We be not born of fornication. We have one father, even God. Jesus said unto them, If God were your father, ye would love me. For I proceeded forth and came from God. Neither came I of myself, but he sent me. Why do ye not understand my speech, even because ye cannot hear my word? 44. Ye are of your father the devil, and the lusts of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. And because I tell you the truth, ye believe me not. Which of you convinceth me of sin? And if I say the truth, why do ye not believe me? He that is of God heareth God's words. Ye therefore hear them not because ye are not of God. Our goal in this study is to analyze those verses. Also bearing in mind the 30 verses that have come before. Christ is in the Jerusalem temple teaching the crowds, the people, the multitude he is rudely interrupted Because the scribes and Pharisees bring an adulteress to him. 
so he can render sentence. Moses commands that we stone her. We caught her in the very act of adultery. Having sexual relations with a man who is not her husband. Either he's married or she's married or they're both married but they aren't married to each other. That's the point. But look at the hypocrisy. Where's the adulterer? Didn't they bring him to? No. That's because this is not an endeavor to uphold the law of Moses. Or to obey the word of God. But rather, they're trying to entrap the Son of God, and it didn't work. He outwitted them. He that is among you that is without sin, let him first cast stones. Well, they weren't without sin, were they? They were deceitful by bringing this adulteress, but not the adulterer for stoning two. The two or three witnesses that Moses stipulated they didn't bear testimony. We saw her in the very act. The witnesses would have been forced to identify the man. If anyone was bearing false witness or telling half-truths concerning sentencing someone to death, the law of Moses, well, it commanded that same sentence be carried out on the false witnesses. Those men convicted they left. No thanks. And they leave. John 8, 11. And Jesus said unto her, Neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. There is redeemed Israel. Moving from the Old Covenant to the New Covenant. The severe law of Moses exacting punishment because the sinner doesn't perform and therefore cannot get the blessing. Under the New Covenant, that's God's performance. Grace! What God can do, can be for Israel. He justifies her because of his shed blood, which has not been shed yet, but it is coming six months from now. He resumes speaking to the crowd, teaching them, I am the light of the world, 12. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. 
And there's a confrontation again in John 8. You want to see, my dear friend, what the Lord's attitude is regarding apostate religion, false teachers, false prophets. Matthew 23 and John 8. Read them. Matthew 23 and John 8. Incendiary language. Jesus Christ was not a feel good preacher. He didn't give people what they wanted to hear. And he wasn't the quote, Christian celebrity that you see in Christendom today. Jesus Christ told them what they needed to hear. And if it offended them, oh well. Let God be true, but every man a liar. Watch how John 8. Becomes more violent. More offensive. Look at the hostility. The insults. Level toward the Lord Jesus Christ. There are numerous souls in Israel, especially in the leadership, walking in darkness, refusing to come to the light. Lest their deeds be reproved. God's word. Is here. The written word of God. They have their Hebrew Bible. They have the living word of God. The Lord Jesus Christ. So they are without excuse. They know what God expects them to believe and do. It is an evidence problem? No. It is a heart problem. Yes. I want to believe. Not interested. We stopped last study, verse 30, John 8, 30. As he spake these words, many believed on him. In spite of the overwhelming unbelief, there's a believing remnant. There is sufficient testimony to lead them to Jesus as Christ, Messiah, King. God's word is working. But it only works in them that believe. 1 Thessalonians 2.13 John 8.8 .8. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, 
If ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. That's a popular axiom or proverb or unfortunately cliche today. The truth shall set you free. I wonder how many who claim that actually know what that verse means. Do they even know it is a Bible verse? The truth shall make you free. John 8, 31. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him. See the believers in verse 30, 31. Jesus addresses them. If ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. Disciples, students, learners. The Greek word, we actually derive from it our English term mathematics. If you continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. These aren't counterfeit believers. Disciples in name only, nominally, nominal disciples, but genuine followers. If ye continue in my word, the doctrine, the words, that my Father has given me to teach you. If ye continue in my word, stay with it, then are ye my disciples indeed. John 8, 32. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. John 8, 32. And ye shall know the truth. And ye shall know the truth. Let me repeat it. And ye shall know the truth. And ye shall know the truth. And ye shall know the truth. If we are Bible believers, if words mean anything, to be a Bible believer means we believe the Bible. Oftentimes, someone claims to be a Bible believer, but when you listen to them and they tell you what they believe, wow, you really don't believe the Bible. If we're Bible believers, then we will believe. John 8, 32. And ye shall know the truth. Some have claimed it is impossible in this world to know anything for certain. Well, hmm, I think that's a little contradictory. Are they not claiming that they know for certain that we can know nothing for certain? Hmm. In pagan circles, <laughs> hmm. I'm reminded 
of a famous, quote, Christian apologist who hates the King James Bible, a final authority he doesn't want. He had written, we can know nothing for certain. And that's why I don't like one English Bible, because that King James Bible, its supporters claim, that's it. That is the truth. He prefers his modern English versions, where you know nothing for certain. <laughs> and that's why they revise and update every few years another English version. <laughs> A defender of the faith, supposedly, he wrote, we can know nothing for certain. Well, I don't see how you can defend Christian doctrine if you know nothing for certain. Because it seems to me like you would take that position of Christian doctrine is right, and whatever's opposed to it is wrong. Anyway, John 8, 31 if you continue in my word, then are you my disciples, and ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Can the truth be known? Is there such a thing as the truth? Absolute truth? In today's culture, it's more desirable for this person to have his truth and that person to have her truth. We all have our truth. Your truth is not my truth, but we can all still get along just fine. Although we have our differences, we can be tolerant. And nothing can be known for certain. Relative righteousness. This may be right for that person, but it isn't right for that person. Well, the Bible disagrees. There is absolute truth, and we can know it. If, if, and it's, it's an enormous if, if we want it. If we want to know the truth, John 7, 17, If any man will do his will, he shall know of the doctrine, whether it be of God or whether I speak of myself. Would you like to know of this doctrine? Whether it's from God, or did I simply invent it myself? You can know. That's what Jesus Christ told them. Any man will do his will. Are you interested in doing God's will? Do you wish? Do you desire? Do you intend to do Father God's will? Then you will know whether the doctrine that I'm teaching is of God or whether it's Jesus' own opinion. John 8. John 8, 31 again. If ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed, and ye shall know the truth. The truth there is not truth in general, it's not someone's personal truth. It's in the verse, John 8, 31. My word, the Lord's word. Show you this. John 17. John 17, verse 17. Sanctify them through thy truth. 
Thy word is truth. Jesus praying to the Father. Thy word, my Father's word, Father's word is truth. If you continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. In this context, the truth sets someone free from error, from lies, deception. As you keep reading this chapter, as I teach this chapter, watch the lie, watch the error, watch the darkness crop up. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. It will liberate you from being misled. The truth shall make you free. My friend, wouldn't you like to be free from lies today? From error? From being tricked, swindled? We can find the truth in the Word of God rightly divided. Second Timothy 2.15 Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Truth. What is the truth today? What is God's word to and about us, the age of grace, it's the preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery. Paul's epistles, the Apostle Paul's epistles, doctrinal letters, Romans through Philemon, those 13 Bible books, Romans through Philemon. John 8, 32. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. In John 8, we will learn about bondage to sin, to Satan, to the lie program. To darkness. Spiritual darkness. But. Here is Jesus Christ. Able and willing. To deliver. Anyone who is willing. To be delivered. Free will, volition. John fourteen six. Jesus Christ declared, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father, but by me. I'm the mediator. I am the spokesman of Father God. I'm the way to Father God. 
I can teach you the truth of Father God. I can give you the life of Father God. The way, the truth, and the life. Can we know absolute truth? Yes. Do we want to know absolute truth? Well, that's up to us. That can be a yes or a no. I hope it's a yes. John 8, 31 again. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, If ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed, and ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. 33. They answered him. Now these are not the believers of verse 30. But the Lord Jesus Christ's opponents, critics, earlier in the chapter, such as verse 13 or verse 3. They reply, John 8, 33, They answered him, We be Abraham's seed, and were never in bondage to any man. How sayest thou, ye shall be made free? Were Abraham's seed. This is boasting or bragging. We're Abraham's seed. Verse 39. They answered and said unto him, Abraham is our father. Hmm. John 8.53. Art thou greater than our father, Abraham? We're Abraham's see. We're Abraham's descendants. John the Baptist addressed that in Matthew 3. And Luke Three, Matthew 3, 9, And think not to say within yourselves, We have Abraham to our father, for I say unto you that God is able of these stones to raise up children unto Abraham. Luke 3, 8. Bring forth therefore fruits worthy of repentance, and begin not to to say within yourselves, We have Abraham to our father, for I say unto you that God is able of these stones to raise up children unto Abraham. Back to John 8. John 8, 32. You shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Huh? Jesus, are you implying that we are slaves to someone? You're wrong. We aren't captive to anyone. We're Jews. In Matthew 3 and Luke 3, They alleged that since they were Abraham's biological descendants, blood relatives, that they had somehow inherited Abraham's righteousness. 
It was an apocryphal Jewish work that went so far as to teach that Abraham was sinless. And so these religious elites, leaders, they believe they're good enough too. The first John chapter 1 crowd. They say they have no sin, which is why they don't participate in John's water baptism. Repent. We don't need that. We don't need forgiveness of sins. We don't need Jesus either. We don't need a Savior. We be Abraham's seed, and we're never in bondage to any man. How sayest thou, ye shall be made free? Can you set us free? We're not in bondage. We've never been slaves to anyone, to any man. Stop and think. Have these Jewish people ever been in bondage to any man? Let me rephrase that. Are they in bondage to any man? Why, yes, they are, aren't they? Luke 2. Luke 2. 1. And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made when Cyrenius was governor of Syria, and all went to be taxed, everyone into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, into Judea, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. Luke 3, 1. Now in the 15th year of the reign of Tiberius Caesar, Pontius Pilate being governor of Judea, and Herod being Tetrarch of Galilee, and his brother Philip, Tetrarch of Iturea, and of the region of Trachonitis, and Lysanias, Tetrarch of Abilene, The Israelites respond to Christ. We've never been in bondage to any man. Oh! Well, what are those Roman soldiers doing patrolling the land of Palestine? Rome is over Israel. The Roman emperors saw them. Luke 2. Luke 3. Tiberius Caesar, Augustus Caesar, Roman emperors. Also, the nation Israel was in Egypt 1500 years prior, slaves to Pharaoh, over 700 years ago, the Assyrians conquered the ten northern tribes. A hundred years later, the Babylonians 
exiled the two southern tribes, the Medes, and the Persians, and the Greeks, here are the Romans. All of these Gentile world powers have made the Israelites their slaves. The fifth course of chastisement, Leviticus 26, verse 27, on through to verse 46. Until Jesus Christ sits on David's throne, Israel is under Gentile rule. That's all because of the sin of breaking the Old Covenant. I told you that's what would happen if you have other gods, idols before me. I'll throw you out of the land. Now they've returned. He's brought them back into the land. But they're still under Gentile oppression. Look at the deception. John 8, 33. They answered him, We be Abraham's seed and were never in bondage to any man. Rome has you in bondage now. Slaves to the Roman government now. That's why the publicans or tax collectors are highly unpopular amongst the Jews. John 8, 33. We've never been in bondage to any man. How sayest thou, ye shall be made free? That's ignorance. That's, that's Bible ignorance. That's ignorance of history. Their own national history. World history. They're deceived. John 8, 34. Jesus answered them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Whosoever committeth sin is the servant of sin. 35. And the servant abideth not in the house forever, but the son abideth forever. 36. If the son therefore shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. Freedom, freedom, Again, thirty four. Verily, verily, truly, surely, don't doubt me, don't question my words. Take me seriously. Verily, 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 I say unto you, whosoever committeth sin is the servant of sin. The reason why the Gentiles, in this case Rome, the Romans, are dominating Israel is because Israel has sinned, violated, disobeyed the law of Moses. For sake of argument, let's overlook the Romans. There's another bondage 
Another type of slavery here. Not physical, but spiritual. Here is Israel's problem. John 8, 34. Verily, verily, I say unto you, whosoever committeth sin is the servant of sin. They're slaves to the sin nature in all sons of Adam. Romans 6, Romans 6, 17. But God be thanked that ye were the servants of sin. These are Christians, believers. But ye have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered unto you. Being then made free from sin, ye became the servants of righteousness. Romans 6 is victorious Christian living in the dispensation of the grace of God. Basic Christian living, the book of Romans. The Apostle Paul addressing members of the church, the body of Christ, reminds them, reminds us, thank God. You used to be servants of sin, but ye obeyed, ye have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered you. I gave you the doctrine, the principles of grace. You believed them, Namely, the gospel of the grace of God. Christ died for our sins. He was buried. He rose again the third day. 1 Corinthians 15, 3 and 4. Since Jesus Christ died for our sins, keep reading. Verse 18. Being then made free from sin, ye became the servants of righteousness. Romans 6, listen to these verses, I'll read them to you. Romans 6, verse 1. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. May God not let that happen. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death? Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death. That isn't water baptism, not water baptism. That baptism is dry. It's the baptism of 1 Corinthians 12, 13. For by one spirit are ye baptized in the one body, the church, the body of Christ. The Holy Spirit identifying the believing sinner as a member of the church, the body of Christ. Now, no water involved at all. Water baptism cannot place anyone into the church, the body of Christ. That's heresy. Romans 6. Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection, knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him. There's the sin nature that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. We were slaves to sin, servants of sin. For he that is dead, seven, is freed from sin. Now if we be dead with Christ, we died with him. We believe that we shall also live with him. Knowing that Christ being raised from the dead dieth no more, death hath no dominion over him. 
For in that he died, he died unto sin once, but in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. Likewise reckon, think, renewed mind, consider, judge it like this. Reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. 12. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, that ye should obey it in the lusts thereof. Neither yield ye your members, body parts, as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead, and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. You can keep reading Romans 6. The point is how God rescues us from sin through the Lord Jesus Christ. He will do that with Israel too in the ages to come with a new covenant. Like lost Israel, we were servants of sin. Our identity has changed. We're no longer in Adam, we're in Christ. We're free from sin. Verse 18, we're the servants of righteousness now. There's our identity. Righteous in Christ, not in and of ourselves. And if we are righteous in Christ, and we are, then shouldn't we have righteous deeds, fruit, to come from that identity? Okay. How simple. Okay. Well, listen. John 8. Israel has that sin problem. But does Israel want God to take care of it? No, I have a sin problem. They believe. Let me show you these other verses. First John 3. First John 3. Four. First John 3, 4. Whosoever committeth sin transgresseth also the law. For sin is the transgression of the law. God gave Israel the law to show them. You can't be my people based on your performance. Because see all these rules and regulations, these standards, you can't meet them. And that's why you will never qualify in and of yourselves to be my people. There's a believing remnant in Israel who comes to realize the lesson of the law. We need a new covenant. What God can do for us. How He can make us His people. And He will perform to give us the blessing. We can't perform. All we get are curses. The Gentiles over Israel, for example. All those curses of the law. Punishments. Leviticus 26. Deuteronomy 27, Deuteronomy 28. 1 John, 1 John 3, 8. He that committeth sin is of the devil, for the devil sinneth from the beginning. For this purpose the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. Verse 9. Whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin, for his seed remaineth in him. And he cannot sin, because he is born of God. See those people sinning there? They're not born of God, huh? He 
He that committeth sin is of the devil. Well, that's their problem in John 8. John 8. John 8, 34. Jesus answered them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Whosoever committeth sin is the servant of sin. Let's overlook you being in bondage to Rome. I'm not going to worry about that. Your main issue is you're in bondage to sin. Yes, that's Israel's dilemma. Servant of sin. Verse 35, John 8, 35. And the servant abideth not in the house forever, but the son abideth ever. If the Son therefore shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. According to the law of Moses, a Hebrew slave was to serve six years and then be freed in the seventh year. Exodus 21 verse 2. Leviticus 25, in the year of Jubilee, all slaves were to be released in Israel. The slaves were temporary. John 8, 36, 35. And the servant abideth not in the house forever, but the son abideth forever. Just as the servant doesn't abide in the house forever, the Lord God does not want Israel to abide forever in slavery to sin. He wants to free them, liberate them, to be a sun nation in the earth. Remember? John 1. John 1, 11. He came into his own, and his own received him not unbelievers, but as many as received him, believers, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. The nation Israel is God's idea, not man's. If Israel is to be God's son, nation in the earth, working with him, doing his will, as a son serves with the father in the family business. Israel needs to be his son nation. The only way that Israel will be God's son nation is if Israel is in God's son. Isaiah chapter 45. Israel shall be saved in the Lord. That's in contrast to Israel in Adam. Look at Romans 5. All people, no matter where you are on the Bible timeline, all people are either in Adam or in Christ. In Adam... Lost in bondage to sin and Satan. Doomed, damned in Christ or in Christ. Saved, redeemed, justified. Israel needs to be in the Lord. 
in Christ. They do that by believing God's word to them. The gospel of the kingdom. Jesus is Christ, Messiah, King. John 8, 29. And he that sent me is with me, and the Father hath not left me alone, for I do always those things that please him. So Israel, you want to do the things that please Father God? You want to always do those things that please Father God? And you will have to be in his Son, who always pleases him. Share the Son's identity. See, that's also true of us. As members of the church, the body of Christ. The Son abides ever. The Son is always in the Father's house. Doing God's will. Believing Israel in Jesus Christ, redeemed. John 8, 36, If the Son therefore shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. Go back to Exodus, Exodus 15. Israel, slaves in Egypt. God freed them under Moses. Exodus 15. Egypt is a type of sin, the world, and satanic bondage. Could Israel free herself from Satan? Nope. Look at the proof. Could she escape Egypt? Nope. Not until God intervened. That's a lesson. Exodus 15, 16. Fear and dread. This is the song of Moses. They're singing. Fear and dread shall fall upon them, the Gentiles. By the greatness of thine arm, they shall be as still as a stone, till thy people pass over, O Lord, till the people pass over, which thou hast purchased. He's redeemed them by power and blood. Those judgments in the blood of the Passover lamb God took Israel from Egypt to bring them into a new land, to have a new identity, a new life. See, there's kingdom glory pictured. In Isaiah 49, Isaiah 49, Isaiah 49, Jehovah God, the Lord God, promises to do all these wonderful works with Israel and the earth in the ages to come. But an objection is raised. Isaiah 49, 24, this is Satan speaking. Shall the prey be taken from the mighty or the lawful captive delivered? Israel is prey to Satan. Satan's prey. Satan is the mighty one. 
They're lawfully captive to Satan. How can they be delivered? They broke the law. They're not God's people. Satan's people. Sinners. So Satan... Boasts. How can you make them your people? God, they're mine. Isaiah 49, 25. But thus saith the Lord, even the captives of the mighty shall be taken, and the prey of the terrible shall be delivered. For I will contend with him that contendeth with thee. And I will save thy children, and I will feed them that oppress thee with their own flesh, and they shall be drunken with their own blood, as with sweet wine. And all flesh shall know that I, the Lord, am thy Savior, and thy Redeemer, the Mighty One of Jacob. There's Jesus Christ talking. I will save you, Israel, from Satan. He has you in his clutches, but I will break his grip on you and free you. I will, not you. You won't do it. Can't save yourself. Jeremiah 31, the new covenant passages. For example, Jeremiah 31. Jeremiah 31, 11, For the Lord hath redeemed, purchased, bought them back, Jacob, and ransomed him from the hand of him that was stronger than he. The binding of the strong man. Matthew 12, Luke 11. When Jesus Christ would exercise Evil spirits. Cast out devils. That was a picture or a preview of Satan being thrown out of Israel's land, out of Israel's people. Kingdom blessing. I can save you from Satan. Bondage to Satan. See the miracle of the exorcism? That's the snake handling Moses in Exodus 4. Victory over Satan. Also, the bodily illnesses healed. Moses, Exodus 4, leprosy type of sin. I can also liberate you from sin. I can heal you of that spiritual sickness that renders you unable to be my people in the earth. So there are miracle healings. The gospel of the kingdom preached. Casting out devils. The gospel of the kingdom preached. All looking forward to this day when Israel is made God's son nation in the earth. John 8, 36. If the Son therefore shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. And the Son shall make them free, and they will be free indeed. John 8, 37. I know that ye are Abraham's seed, but ye seek to kill me, because my word hath no place in you. So, Jesus latches on to verse 33. We be Abraham's seed, and we were never in bondage to any man. He replies, 37, I know that you're Abraham's seed. I don't, I don't dispute that. You are 
biological juice, blood juice, physical juice, Your problem is a spiritual relationship with someone else. We'll get to that in a little while. John 8, 37. I know that you are Abraham's seed, but ye seek to kill me, because my word hath no place in you. Recall John 5. They sought to slay him. Because he had healed that impotent man on the Sabbath. John 5, 16. They sought to kill Jesus more. Because he said that God was his father, making himself equal with God. John 5, 18. In John 7. John 7. John 7. 19. Did not Moses give you the law, and yet none of you keepeth the law? Why go ye about to kill me? 25. Is not this he whom they seek to kill? Mm -hmm. You don't sound like believers to me. You purpose to murder me. You're Abraham's seed physically, but ye seek to kill me because my word hath no place in you. You don't accept my word. You refuse what I'm saying. You refuse me. You refuse my father who sent me to tell you those words. They're Abraham's children physically but not spiritually and that's the one that counts for eternity keep reading John 8 38 I speak that which I have seen with my father and ye do that which ye have seen with your father Christ and his father and these unbelieving apostate Jews and their father. Look at the two fatherhoods and the two types of sons. Jesus Christ reflects Father God. Apostate Israel reflects her father too. It's not Abraham. It's not Father God. Keep reading. John 8, 39. They answered and said unto him, Abraham is our father. See? Back to that. Reliance on their Jewish bloodline, their heritage. Abraham is our father. John 8, 39. Jesus saith unto them, If ye were Abraham's children, ye would do the works of Abraham. John 8, 40. But now ye seek to kill me, a man that hath told you the truth, which I have heard of God. This did not Abraham. Abraham was a man of faith. He believed God's words to him. Genesis 15. Romans 4. Galatians 3. Abraham is the father of all them that believe. 
These aren't believers. In John 8. Now you seek to kill me, John 8, 40. A man that hath told you the truth. See? They could know the truth. They have heard the truth. Which I have heard of God. My Father sent me to teach you the truth. But do you want it? This did not Abraham. Abraham received divine revelation. You have it. You don't want it yet. John 8, 41. Why? Because ye do the deeds of your father. And that father there is not Abraham. But now you seek to kill me, a man that hath told you the truth, which I have heard of God. This did not Abraham. Ye do the deeds of your father. Now watch this. John 8, 41. Ooh. Vicious. Malicious. Insult. John 8, 41. Then said they to him, We be not born of fornication. We have one Father, even God. We be not born of fornication. We have one Father, even God. Fornication. Illicit sexual acts. Continual. Outside of marriage. John 8, 41. Fornication. We get our English word pornography for that Greek word. Pornia. John 8, 41. We be not born of fornication. We have one Father, even God. God is our Father. Hmm. By the way, Jesus, who's your Father? Do you realize the impact of that statement? John 8, 41, we be not born of fornication. They're suggesting his mother Mary is a whore and that Jesus Christ is a bastard Remember, he's 33 years old. All his life on earth, the Lord Jesus Christ has been the subject of gossip, ridicule. His mother claimed to be a virgin when she conceived him. Yeah, sure. She cheated on Joseph before they consummated their marriage. She had an illegitimate child. But supposedly, she says God gave her that son. Look at that insult. All these years, 30 years, 
the Snickers. That Jesus Christ and Mary had to experience. That's a denial of the virgin conception of the Lord Jesus Christ. Matthew 1, verse 18. Matthew 1, 18. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise. When as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man, 19, and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privily, secretly. Joseph doesn't understand yet what happened. He thinks Mary has been unfaithful. They were engaged, but they never connected sexually yet. So now that she's pregnant, well, I know I'm not the father. So Joseph, without making a spectacle, he will secretly divorce Mary, assuming she's been unfaithful. Deuteronomy 24 allows that. Matthew 1, 20. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. So God corrects Joseph. Don't misunderstand, Joseph. Mary has been faithful to you. The Holy Ghost has conceived this child, in Mary's womb. No physical father, biological father is involved. The virgin conception of Christ. Matthew 1, 21. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins, because they cannot save themselves from their sins. He must do it. Jehovah, Joshua. Jehoshua, Jehovah Savior. Jesus is Greek. Matthew 1, 22. Now all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which is being interpreted, which being interpreted is God with us. Then Joseph, being raised from his sleep, did as the angel of the Lord had bidden him, and took unto him his wife, and knew her not, did not have intimate relations with her, till she had brought forth her firstborn son, and he called his name Jesus. You can read about Mary in Luke 1, 26 through 38, where she learns about the virgin conception of Christ. John 8, 41. Then said they to him, We be not born of fornication. We're not like you, Jesus. We know who our daddy is. John 8, 41. We have one Father, even God. God is our Father. Well, I don't think so. The Lord Jesus Christ himself should know. No, God isn't your Father. He's my Father, but he certainly isn't yours. John 8. 42, Jesus said unto them, If God were your father, you would love me. For I proceeded forth and came from God, neither came I of myself, but he sent me. 
There again, the Father sent me over and over in John. He sent me. He sent me. The Father sent me. I am of the Father. I've come from the Father. If you really had God as your spiritual Father there, you would love me. I proceeded forth and came from God. God sent me to you. And you have the audacity to reject me and then say, God is your father? Foolishness. John 8. Whew. Watch this. John 8.43. Why do ye not understand my speech? Even because ye cannot hear my word. They don't have any comprehension. They hear physical sound waves, but do they have hearts of faith to hear with understanding? 1 Corinthians 2, 14, But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him, Neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. They can hear those words spoken all they want. But they have no understanding. It's nonsense to them. God's word is foolishness to lost people even today. That's why when you talk to them about the scriptures, they look at you. What in the world are you talking about? You're speaking another language. They only know human language. But you know God's language, quoting scripture. And that's why there's incompatibility. But if they want to know the truth, they can know it. It isn't God's fault. They have no understanding here in John 8. You cannot hear my word. You do not understand my speech. Verse 47, He that is of God heareth God's words. Ye therefore hear them not, because ye are not of God. Why can you not understand or hear my word? John 8, 44. Ye are of your father, the devil. And the lusts of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own for he is a liar and the father of it. And because I tell you the truth, ye believe me not. Which of you convinceth me of sin? And if I say the truth, why do ye not believe me? He that is of God heareth God's words. Ye therefore hear them not, because ye are not of God. That's not a feel-good response. Ye are of your father the devil. Spiritually, your spiritual father is Satan, the devil. So yes, you can brag, you can boast. We are Abraham's seed, physically, but you're Satan's seed, spiritually. John 8, 44, ye are of your father, the devil. Are we all God's children? No. According to the Bible, some people are the devil's children. If the Bible's true, and I think it is, we're not all God's children, contrary to what we hear.
everyone is God's child, the Lord Jesus Christ believes otherwise. Yet again, remember, the truths of the scriptures are nonsense to those who don't have the Holy Spirit teaching them. They're in darkness. According to Galatians, Galatians 3, Galatians 3, 26, For ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. That's how we're children of God, by faith in Christ Jesus, Galatians 3, 26. Whoever doesn't have faith in Christ Jesus is not a child of God. Ye are of your father the devil. The lusts of your father ye will do. 44, John 8. The desires of Satan. You want to do Satan's work because you are Satan's children. I think this is a good place to stop. And hopefully, we'll finish the chapter next time. We shall see. Thank you, Father God, for your word. And we believe sound Bible doctrine and be set free from all the errors of the evil world system. In Christ's name, amen.